The second example that I have is um, an example of, like Karen said, maybe, maybe it's not art, but maybe it's not bad either. Um, I met an amazing individual, um, actually at an art event, um, a show about surveillance, and he came and spoke about uh, the COINTELPRO uh, FBI program against the Black Panther Party. And his name was Michael Zinson. And I was an artist in residence at a local cable uh, station in Pasadena for three years. And when I finished my residency, sort of almost on the last day, Michael came to a producer's meeting and said, I want to do a show, Message to the Grassroots. And I said, oh, fabulous, I want to help you. And so I worked with Michael for 10 years, and actually he was involved in the CAP program. And I've um, sort of shortened a little tribute that I made for him. So if we could just please play number two. I am a community activist, revolutionist, uh, whose commitment is to social change, not just for black people, but for all oppressed people. And we think that we need to uh, divide the wealth of this nation, not only with this nation, but with the rest of the world, particularly since we've exploited the rest of the world to get what we have here, the kind of creature comforts we have here in this country. About 1999, maybe a little earlier than that, it was apparent that we needed more jobs and more education in order to break the cycle of the repeat criminal offender with the particular emphasis on the intergenerational gang violence that was occurring. So I went to Michael and his in, uh, grand intellect and he schooled me up on what to do, what to say, where to go, and how to more importantly put it down on paper to affect the entire criminal justice system to this day. As a result, we identified uh, thousands of thousands of job opportunities. We ended up having to sue my boss's boss, which is the County Board of Supervisors, <laughs> over not implementing at-risk youth employment. <sighs> Two years later, after a five-year struggle, the County Board of Supervisors settled for $45 million. Not a penny went to myself or Michael. $45 million went to the wages paid to at-risk youth. The movement to expand the gang truce continues. And uh, what we have is a room full of guests here tonight, young people uh, and adults who have worked in a uh, video project that was put on by CalArts uh, in conjunction with the Watts Towers. Uh, just a whole lot of issues that need to be put out there for people to begin discussing and challenging and, and finding out what the truth is because much of the truth is hidden under the glamour and the lights in mainstream media. So we don't get the real picture of what's wrong and usually when we do find out it's too late. Uh, sensationalized murders, sensationalized rapes, sensationalized incidents in which rather than uh, looking at how we can prevent things from happening, it's basically glorifying it. And I think that this is the kind of issues, uh, these are the kind of issues that we have to uh, put alternative focus on. Despite the jingoistic rhetoric of nearly all Republican and some Democratic members of Congress during last week's debate, Neither Congress nor President Bush has made a compelling case for war. The reason our young people are going into the military in droves is because there are no other options for them in this society. They're either going to go into the military, they're going to deal drugs, they're going to jail, or they're going to be dead. And in just a short time here in this room, they will be holding a vote on whether to support war in the Middle East. And it seems very clear in this community, at any rate, in any event, that vote will be a resounding no. I'm Ann McDermott, CNN, reporting live from Pasadena, California. The lessons of a panther to one who was lost in the conflict and the battle between Bloods and Crips was that we had a greater calling rather than self-destruction. Michael has done so much in my life, I, can't, I don't have enough time to talk about it. He said that we had to link the local, the national, and the international struggle. And brothers and sisters had to understand the dialectic. 
He always went on about the dialectic. And I listened and I studied and I got the books on myself, Michael. And I traveled the world because you took me to get my first passport, sent me to Brazil and sent me other places. Been to South Africa and traveled this world. <laughs> to carry on the message and the legacy of your power, of your light. Um, one of the workshops that Michael and I did in Watts with um, former gang members about uh, forming a truce. Now he lives in uh, the UK and he does his own youth activism.